Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today I am going to create an art journal layout, so I am working on my Moleskin sketchbook and I am going to start by doing some stamping on my background. So I am using black archival ink which is permanent and I am going to use a very old stamp that I have that is going to cover up my background with uh, text. Now I believe this stamp is by Hero Arts and it's not available anymore but um, there are so many text stamps out there available and I am going to make sure that I am going to link some of them below. Now I'm going to make sure that I cover up pretty much uh, the whole background. As uh, you can see, I'm not going for the perfect impression, I don't really mind. This is just the first layer on my background and uh, most of it is going to be covered up by paint. However, I'm going to use distress paint which is quite transparent, it's not super opaque and uh, that is going to make sure that some of the text at the background will be visible at the final piece. Now I'm going to do a fun technique today and uh, for that you need to use uh, microglaze. Now I have microglaze by Ranger which is a Tim Holtz product and another one by Jutikin whichever you have works perfect and if you don't have any of these products you can always use Vaseline. Now I'm going to apply my microglaze and uh, in this case I'm using uh, the one by Tim Holtz with a very thin and stiff brush and I'm going to apply it in different areas all over my pages. Notice that I am going only top to bottom, but uh, you can go ahead and uh, do right to left or any way you like. You can also apply it with your fingers if you wish, or with a thicker brush. The thicker the brush or the more the application, you will end up with a more dramatic look. Now what that um, does is that when I am going to apply my paint all over it, and that's acrylic paint actually, uh, it's going to resist the acrylic paint, so I hope you can already see how my paint separates exactly where that um, microglaze is underneath. I have covered up both my pages and I hope you can see where the paint separates already. I'm cleaning up my brushes, I'm going to cover up my paint and by the way that's spiced marmalade if you're wondering which color I used. I'm going to drink a little bit of my coffee and I'm going to make sure that my paint is dry. So I'm going to build uh, layers upon layers using this exact technique and I'm going to end up with a peeled paint look at the end. So once everything is dry I'm going to bring in a baby wipe so that I can buff off any areas that still have that uh, glaze on top. And then I'm going to start over. So again I'm using my micro glaze, applying it in different areas. And these are the areas that are going to resist my next color and this time I'm going with Broken China, one of my favorite colors from the Distress line. Now as you can see I am uh, dropping a little bit of my acrylic paint on my craft mat so you can see exactly how much I uh, take with my brush. And uh, I'm going to go over the pages again. Now I am I still have the Distress paints that have that dabber on top. Most of my dabbers are already dry, I have them for years, but um, I know that you can get, if you wish, you can get new dabbers to replace those um, dabbers that you might have and they are totally dry, or you can even uh, totally change them with new flip top uh, cups. In any case, I am not going to bother with new cups, I am just going to use them as they are and just unscrew the dabber and uh, dip my brushes in or just um, add a little bit of the paint on my craft mat just like I did now. So again I am uh, using my heat gun to dry this layer and you can already see how beautiful it looks and I'm going to enhance it even more. So I'm going to buff uh, any excess and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the next page. So this is the final look on my background and of course you can go ahead and add even more layers if you wish so. I'm going to stop with those two colors as I don't want that to look too busy. It's already busy as it is. So I am going to use this uh, stamp that is going to give a wood texture on my background. This comes from a stamp set by Tim Holtz and I'm using Sepia Archival Ink. Again I'm using Archival Ink just because it is permanent so no matter what I decide to do on top of those layers later on it's not going to smudge or smear. Again I'm not going for a perfect impression after all that's just wood texture. 
So you see I'm not even using a block to stamp anything. I am only using my fingers and pressing uh, my stamp in different areas. And I don't know if you can tell through the camera, but uh, I can still see the text at the background coming through all those layers of uh, paint. And you will definitely going to spot that when you see the final photos at the end. So now let's move on to the next step. I am using my scissors and I'm going to cut out a little bit from the outside edges of both the pages all over, which is going to create a nice dimensional frame. Notice that I'm using my scissors to cut out a slightly wavy line here, so nothing is totally straight and perfect. And of course I'm not working back to back to the previous page and that allows me to do that. Now I usually avoid working back to back and that's because I might get an idea of uh, tearing my pages somewhere or maybe I want to do some uh, piercing, some uh, stitching or even uh, add an eyelet. And uh, if you are not working back to back, you also protect the previous um, page, the previous pro project from uh, possible um, bleeding of your paints. And when I finish my project, I can always stick those empty pages together, which are going to end up giving me a more sturdier uh, page, which I really like. Anyway, I am uh, using my uh, distress tool there, so I'm going all around the edges to distress them a little bit more. Now I'm going to add uh, more details on the look that I am going for, so with my fingers I am just tearing off some parts of my pages. And once that's done, I am going to bring in again my sepia archival link. I'm going to use my craft mat underneath the, so that I make sure that I don't end up uh, creating a mess underneath. And uh, I'm going to ink up the edges. As I am uh, inking up, I'm making sure that I am quite rough with my blending tool. This way I curl up the edges and distress them even more. Now I am going to draw a keyhole on uh, this page, so for that I'm going to use this die and uh, you can also use any round object that you probably have uh, laying around on your table. So I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to go around that uh, die and then again with my pencil I'm going to draw a triangle just underneath that circle. And now I'm going to use my scissors to go all around that pencil line and cut out the keyhole. And now I'm going to treat the edges of the keyhole exactly how I treated the edges of the pages. So I'm going to distress them and also ink them up and make them look darker. Now I'm going to work a little bit at the back of the keyhole and for that I'm using a script uh, text uh, stamp which is quite big and uh, I'm going to cover up the whole background. Now the idea is to have text behind the keyhole as well as all around the, bo the borders. So that's what I'm going to do here. Again this uh, script um, is an old stamp that I have but you will find links down below to a script stamp that is quite big as this is and um, it's still available online. Now I'm going to continue working on this uh, back page and I want it to look like an old book page that's why I'm using uh, Distress Oxide ink and that's anti-cleanen. I'm going to cover up most of the page with that and I'm also going to add into the mix a little bit of vintage photo. Now I'm going to spray a little bit of water, this is going to help uh, both those colors to blend in nicely and it's also going to oxidize the ink so it's going to give it a more uh, chalky finish look, finished look which I think completes the look that I'm going for beautifully and I'm going to do the exact same uh, thing on the other page. And here is a close-up look on how the keyhole and the paper behind it looks like at the moment. So this is where I decided that I needed to ink up the edges with an even darker color just to help them stand up against the background. So I decided to go around them with black archival ink and I'm only inking up the edges. I'm not going further towards the center of my page. 
Now I'm finally happy with how my background is looking, so I will go ahead and uh, work a little bit on my focal points. For that, I have uh, chosen some of the butterflies from uh, the latest uh, released stamp set by Tim Holtz. I'm going to stamp them on um, mixed media paper with uh, black archival ink, which is permanent. And I have chosen three different designs there. And now I am going to cover up all those images with matte medium. I am using a dry brush to do so. And I am doing that because this is the way to turn a porous surface into a non-porous. And that's exactly what I need to use my favorite coloring method, which is using my big brush markers. Now that the matte medium is dry, I can go ahead and use my big brush markers, apply a little bit of ink and then smudge it with my finger and I am capable of doing that just because my surface is non-porous. And here is how I store my big brush markers. I like to keep them uh, horizontally in a clear box so that I can see all the colors. And um, I really love them just because they are super easy to smudge and to create shadows. But at the same time, they are quite transparent so they don't cover up the black lines of the stamped images. Another great thing about them is that they dry permanent, so when I end up sticking them on top of my project, I will not be afraid of uh, any technique that I might use on top of them, since they will not smudge or smear. Now, as you can see, I have added a darker tone at the center of my butterflies, and um, I wasn't neat white while coloring them at all, since I was planning to cut them out with my scissors. And once I have cut them all out, I will use my matte medium to stick them on top of my uh, background. Now, as I'm doing that, just to let you know uh, about a question that I get all the time, uh, the big brush markers come in two different ways. They are the big brush markers that uh, they have the bigger barrel and the bigger uh, nib, and that's the ones that I use. But they also come in a smaller barrel with a very fine tip. Both of them have the exact same ink inside and can be used with the exact same uh, uh, way as I use them. So if you have access on the smaller ones, then you can get them if you wish so. And you will find links down below to both those products so you can check them out, see the prices and the colors that you can get. Now, as you can see, I have used my matte medium to stick down the pages as well as the butterflies. And now I will go ahead and do a little bit of splashing. I have um, a little bit of white and black gesso on my craft mat. I have also uh, cut out a few pieces of uh, scrap paper just to cover up my butterflies. And now after diluting the gesso with uh, a little bit of water, I'm going to create some splashes all over my background. Of course, splashes is totally optional. I just love them and I like to add them on uh, my pages. So I always use black because I end up having uh, a black quote on my pages. So the black edges, the black splashes and the black quote is going to bring everything together. And at the same time, I do white splashes like you see me doing here because I always like to add some white um, highlights with my uh, white gel pen. So I think that uh, small little touch that like uh, these really bring everything together and bind uh, your different elements on your page nicely. Now everything is completely dry so I am ready to use my white gel pen. I'm adding some highlights around my butterflies and that's just a touch that I always like to do on my focal points. I find that uh, it helps them pop against the background and uh, it gives them a nice uh, whimsical look. I am also going to add a few highlights around the keyhole and then I'm going to use a fine black marker to add antennas for my butterflies since I didn't bother to cut them out. Now for my quote, I'm going to use this beautiful stamp set. This is an alphabet stamp set by Concord the Ninth and you will find a link to it down below. And what I love about that is that you can stamp one letter close to the other as if it is one continuous word, which is going to give the perfect calligraphy look. Now I am stamping the word escape and you will see how beautiful it's going to look at the end as one continuous handwritten word. So I'm going to stamp Escape the Ordinary.
and then I'm going to use my white gel pen and add some highlights on one side of the letters. This is going to help the letters uh, pop against the background. And it's a touch that I always like to do on my pages. And because I couldn't leave this page alone, I just had to use this beautiful tie. This is a leaf tie by my favorite things. I have cut out a bunch of those leaves out of a green pattern paper. And now I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe glue and I'm going to stick them coming out from all those little uh, notches that I have cut out on my paper. Although I do have quite a bit of dimension on this page, it's still going to be able to close and um, this would also be a great idea to create on a canvas since you can go as dimensional as you like there. Now I am going to stick a few more just to make it look fuller. And finally, I have uh, some of those white flowers by Tim Holtz, which I am going to stick. I have already cut them with my scissors, so I don't have any stems at the back of them. These are paper flowers. They look dimensional, but you can uh, press them as uh, far as you like, and they will end up uh, quite flat, and I will be able to close the book. Now, I'm going to stick them down with matte medium, as you can see here. I'm creating clusters just close to the leaves. And I'm going to leave them uh, white as they are. You can, of course, uh, match your projects and color them with uh, any type of ink. But um, I just like how that uh, white pops against all those colors. I am going, however, to color the center of the flowers with a yellow marker. And now I'm going to finish off my page by sticking uh, three different stickers from this uh, Tim Holtz booklet. So I'm going to stick one of them next to each butterfly and uh, all those uh, stickers complement the main quote. So along with Escape the Ordinary, I'm going to stick Make it Happen, Adventure I Wait You, close to my yellow butterfly. And finally, I'm going to use the sticker Be You Bravely. So my layout is ready. All that's left to do is to stamp the date. And uh, for that I'm using a roller date stamp with black archival ink. And I'm going to find a nice spot to stamp that. And that was the layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of the project that I made today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, because this is the way to tell me that you like my videos and you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and see you next time!